All right, guys, welcome back to PacWest Bigfoot. This is David, and uh, first and foremost, I want to say this month's giveaway will happen around the 20th. If you're not part of the free giveaways here, the <clears throat> uh, you need to get over to PacWestBigfoot.com, PacWestBigfoot.com. Go ahead and subscribe to the clan, and you will be on that list. Um, also, I've had many of you asking me about, um, you know, basically some swag, I guess you would say, things like uh, PacWest Bigfoot hoodies and T-shirts and you know, uh, coffee mugs. I'm going to have a coffee mug, a t-shirt, a long sleeve shirt, and a hoodie. I have the logo made. Everything's going to be out here pretty soon. I'm just trying to find the most affordable uh, place to do this. Like I said, <clears throat> the only way that I generate any sort of income on these things, guys, is through AdSense uh, and donations. So I'm trying to find something out here that is going to be real, real affordable so you can get your hands on all the stuff that you want, period. So... Um, also, anything else? Uh, not really. I think uh, what we can do is I got this um, story here secondhand from the uh, gentleman's son. Uh, this one takes place over in Gold Beach, Oregon, this next encounter story. So let's get into that. I want to say also thank you guys so very much for putting up with me and my coffee and everything else. As a matter of fact, I do not, just so you know, I do not get paid from Sasquatch Coffee Company. I just love, I love the coffee. So let's take a sip. <clears throat> and clear the throat <clears throat> and get ready for this little campfire side tail. All right, Bigfoot stole my fish and nearly my life. Fisherman from Gold Beach gets fish taken by Bigfoot. Life's a beach, a Gold Beach in Oregon where I currently live and run a small business. It was on a day off that I had a run in with something I never thought was real, Bigfoot. And I have to tell you, it's not a very nice animal. I live in Gold Beach, Oregon. Uh, I moved here with my parents as a teen. Especially, uh, actually, I was about 14 years old when they moved here to start up and run a fishing charter and guide service that I currently took over and run today. I will, like many others, keep my name out of this, however. If you ever find a guy, however, fishing in the same spot I had this incident, just start up the conversation and say something funny about Bigfoot, Bigfoot country and you'll know it's me. And I'll know you read this, and I'll share my encounter with you personally. White Sharks and Bigfoot. I'm a fishing guide here in Gold Beach, Oregon, and there are many of us here, actually. And some of us live down the road in Brookings, but I live here just up Jerry Flats Road. Mostly, of course, I do more deep sea and ocean fishing, if you will. But if you ask me, fly fishing guided tours up the Rogue River and nearby creeks and lakes are my favorite parts of my job. As a matter of fact, I was trying out a new spot up the river further than I usually go when I had a run-in with a legend of the forest, a myth that is all too real in the end, Bigfoot. It was a very frightening experience, so much so that it took me a whole year to get it to get uh, semi-comfortable with going back to the upper part of the river to fish alone. But I have. Today, I know <clears throat> that it was probably a once-in-a-lifetime experience much like seeing a great white shark, which I have once. Let me share with you what happened that day, where I was, and what I think led up to this encounter. January steelhead fishing. <clears throat> Everybody knows that the Oregon coast in the winter is pretty harsh. However, I have to say, it is not as cold as the inland, uh, as the inland parts like the Rogue Valley or Klamath Falls area. It may be cold, wet, windy, and rainy here, but it hardly ever snows, and the average daily temp without the wind chill factor is in the 40s. As a matter of fact, this day, the day I would have this sighting and encounter, it was 51 degrees, something I was hoping for. Not to mention, the actual sun was peeking out here and there as well. I had seen the weather channel a few days previous, mentioned the high pressure system coming through, and I figured I would take advantage of it. With no <clears throat> guided tours until the weekend, well, I thought, why not? So, I spent the weekend gathering everything for a whole morning and afternoon spent further up the road than I usually travel. Approximately, or about 35 miles up it, actually. My good friend has a small cabin and his wife and him had, his wife and him <clears throat> had inherited and remodeled into a two-bedroom for him, her, and any grandkids that would come and visit from time to time. 
It was also located near a great little spot in the river he mentioned was always teeming with steelhead. So I would be heading out there bright and early that Monday morning. Of course, they were gone for a few weeks. They were in, to be in Medford Ashland area, visiting family. And that was fine. I would have a place to hit the restroom if really desperately needed to. I looked forward to a day of fishing. It was somewhere I had not really been yet. <clears throat> and a new place was always intriguing. But intriguing was not what I was going to get. This would be more like frightening and scary, actually. So let's get to what happened and why I still get a chill even thinking about it today. Early morning on the road. I woke up and the sun was up, and I remember being on the road before it came up as well. Winter mornings seem slow here in the Pacific Northwest, and I like it that way personally. I had everything already packed up and ready to go, minus my breakfast. I would grab it, uh, grab at the bakery on the way out, and the lunch I would take, but that only took minutes to accomplish. Soon enough, I was speeding down the old highway, or more like windy old road, hoping for little traffic as things were slightly frosted, and that made for some slippery parts of the road here and there. There was one bridge crossing and then a turn off that would take me to the rest of uh, take me the rest of the way to my friend's cabin and the honey hole they kept telling me about. <clears throat> the cabin was beautiful, I have to say. Actually, the remodeled, uh, the remodel pretty much turned it into some cabin life, picturesque wilderness getaway you would find in a home design magazine or some channel on Instagram, to tell you the truth. But I was not there for the plush life. Uh, I was just here for the day, day of steelhead fishing and taking in a new view. It was rather remote this far out. The nearest neighbors were at least six to seven miles east and west of me. It was a decent morning, though, like I said. It was probably cloudy, well, mostly cloudy, but it was warm, and the sun would peek out here and there. I took a small trail they cut down uh, to a bend in the river where a small sandbar would be exposed this time of year. Of course, I was not to sit out in the open, I decided to plant myself towards the upper part of the bar itself, close to where the forest literally meets the water's edge. It took me a few minutes to get my line rigged, but as soon as it was, I cast in and settled back. Well, <clears throat> stood there, happy of a kid in a candy store, waiting for the flood of steelhead to hit, actually. And guess what? My buddy and his wife were correct. Five minutes later, wham, fish on. Too small. It was a throwback. Uh, most would be for the next half hour, well, till my attention was taken over by something in the woods, crashing through the forest. <clears throat> there was a, uh, where I was at, I could not see the road on the opposite side of the river, but I could hear the traffic. Well, what traffic that did drive from time to time and came through. What I was hearing moments later, however, came from up behind me, and it was literally crashing about in the woods. It sounded as if someone was just recklessly running, not galloping, running through the woods with no care for giving itself away at all. Bear, elk, deer, mountain lion. All of these things or answers to what I was hearing ran through my mind. Fortunately, I was smart enough to pack my pistol and take, and take it with me. No matter where you go in Oregon, when out and alone, even if it's a twenty-two, you bring a gun. <clears throat> now that I know what is out here, I bring a bigger one when I do. Anyways, I had been there about an hour, half an hour, hour, when I started hearing this animal or whatever come crashing down the mountainside and actually towards me in my position. I have to say it was a little upsetting and I had never heard anything like that in the woods before, and I'm a guide for crying out loud. I reeled in and set my pole down for a few. I walked over to the edge of the tree line where the thick forest started. I could not see too far in, but far enough to see whatever it was if it started up again, I believed. No sound came, just the rushing river behind me and birds on the other side of it. Whatever it was either stopped or was gone. I stood there, staring for what must have been a minute, and then gave it up to a bear, elk, or just a large buck perhaps, passing by. I continued fishing for another 30 minutes or so before taking a break for a snack and a drink, and neither <clears throat> and neither I um, and neither I would be able to finish. Over the next half hour, however, I caught what was the largest steelhead I had ever seen, and then caught another. The fishing story would be one to share for years to come, I thought, but what I am going to share now 
well, forget the fishing story, because I would never have thought this would happen in a million years. Leave the ice chest, take the cannoli. As I said, the crashing stopped, and so did any real movement. So I went back to fishing. I kept looking over my shoulder from time to time and kept the gun closer by. It did not take long, but I had a fish on again. This year was a little historic, as we could take more than two in a day, I have to say. I had another large, almost record-setting one again. It took me a few to land, a few minutes to land it, but I did. <clears throat> and that is when the seriousness began. As I was facing the forest, unhooking the fish from my line, there was a scream. I've since heard a few times online in my own investigations over the last few years or so. And coming from the forest, I was now staring at. It was loud. You could almost feel it, and it sounded like it was protruding from the large set of lungs, the largest set of lungs I have ever heard. It started as a guttural bellow and grew to a high-pitched scream that sounded almost like a banshee, if there are any. At that point, I figured I needed heart medications as mine suddenly froze, then almost leaped out of my chest and ran straight for the car. <clears throat> I reached over, grabbed a little handgun, and remember thinking to myself that the gun I had and the scream I heard, well, apparently I was not up for this fight if this thing came crashing out of the woods. <clears throat> Just then I saw something. It was a large shadow pretty far in the thick of the trees and bushes. Too far for me to really tell what it was, but enough to tell that it was dark, large, and relatively fast as it suddenly moved from west to east about 20 yards before stopping behind a group of trees. I caught myself leaning forward and squinting my eyes to see in but the sun was coming out, and the reflection of the river just made the surroundings brighter and the forest darker. Uh, I was, <clears throat> I saw something though, maybe a bear, but that was a tall bear, I thought. I decided to pack things up and maybe just head out back down the river a few miles or so. Better to be safe than sorry. I wish I would have left sooner, however. That is when the crashing started again in the woods, and yes, it was coming right at me. However, this time I could see what looked like a large, hairy, man, monster thing coming towards me from about 50 yards inside the trees. It was huge, at least eight feet tall, hairy, and soon enough that we see its face, the face of a mountain devil. I was furiously gathering my stuff, but this thing was barreling down on me, and I was afraid it might cut me off or simply attack me at any moment. But it stopped about 15 yards inside the trees, and it just stood there looking at me. It looked angry in the face. Its dark, deep, inset eyes just stared right through me. And there was hair all over its face, except for around the nose and eyes. <clears throat> there was hair there, but it was light in color compared to the rest of the body, just enough to barely notice. The mouth, when closed, was a large slit with a huge jawline. The skin was a light-colored ashen coal, but the hair was jet black, long, and covered the whole body. This was a Bigfoot I was staring at was staring at me. I could not believe it. All the stories growing up, the document or documentaries that led nowhere, and here it was, massive, tall, scary, and standing in real life right in front of me. It was 15 yards away at most, but it was the air. But it was in the open between trees, just staring me down. Eventually, like a freight train coming at you, the second scream from this thing rattled my bones. I felt almost stunned, literally. Stunned and could not move a muscle. The mouth on this creature was huge, and his teeth, although they looked blocked for the most part, well, you could still tell they could bite you in half, or me at that point. I found myself raising my head up again to see where this thing was at, was at <clears throat> and if it had moved. And it had. It stood now near the sandbar I was on, just back into the woods a yard or two. It was all of eight feet plus tall, now that I could see all of them. I kept up a low, it, it kept up a low growl and looked over at the fish lying on the bank at that point. I looked at it, looked at me, then the fish again. I got the clue, or the hint. This animal, animal wanted my catch, and hopefully that was all. I slowly grabbed my pack and held my gun in the other hand. I left the pole, the ice chest, and the fish course, started back up the trail, back to the cabin in my car. At first I thought that I, <clears throat> that was a bad move as this creature went to all fours all of a sudden and pounded the ground once with its fists, but it didn't move towards me. 
And I started slowly backing away again. And as I did, this thing stood up again and inched out slowly, moving its head and shoulders my way and back to the fish. It reached them, it picked them up with its huge hands and walked back off into the forest. The strides on this thing, uh, this thing took were at least four to five feet in length. And the way it walked was horribly weird. As soon as it was out of sight, I ran safe in the sound. It took me two minutes to start the car. I felt safe, but my mind was whirling over what I just saw. And I looked over at the cabin and knew that the minute I got home, I would call my friend and tell him what happened near his place and warn them. All the way back, it felt like I was still in the middle of a bad dream, but it was real. Barely an hour or two later, after getting there, I was back on the road heading home with the vision of this thing playing over and over in my mind and the whole situation too. My friend, a few hours later, called me back after I got home and left him a message. He did not sound skeptical about my event, um, but he said they did not notice anything up there at all. Well, <clears throat> other than a bear, it's a cougar. He did mention that his, uh, his wife and himself had come across some weird tracks and scats once near Gold Beach, up on a trail that runs along the entire Oregon coast. No wonder he was not shocked. It took me some time to get back into being out on the river alone again. And when on the guide job up and down the river, I would catch myself looking around constantly, even today. Today I am much more relaxed though, but I am also more aware of the wood that the woods do have other animals in them. One that seems to have no real fear of us, at least not when it comes to them and their food source. Personally, however, I try to stick to the ocean today as often as possible, just in case. Thanks.